In this video, having discussed the partition method, we are going to now try to analyze an implementation of quicksort. We called it quicksort one here. For this implementation, we are going to first find the median element of the array. We are then going to partition the array around that median element and then sort the two halves. So we find the median element of an array Who knows where it is? We then partition the array so that that medium element, which we call P, is in the correct location. Everything on the left must be less than or equal to P. Everything on the right must be greater than P. And then we sort those two halves. Well, we sort them both using quick sort, so we do again partition and partition and partition. So this should be look similar to merge sort. We're splitting an array and seeing what happens. But we actually get some various efficiencies as a result of this implementation. For one, we after having done this, we guarantee that P is in its correct position, whatever the pivot point was. So we're always sorting at least one element every time. And with, with that in mind, how long do these things take? The sizes of things don't make much sense. So let's say let S, sorry, let N equal j minus i plus 1, which if I call this s1 and this s2 for the sizes of those two things, s1 would equal s minus 1 minus i plus 1, which is s minus i, that's it, and s2 would equal j minus quantity s plus 1 minus 1, which is j minus s. And those don't look helpful to me because I don't have a good grasp of what s is. s is the position of this element p in between the indices i and j. A more convenient way to look at this is sometimes to define another variable like k, which we're going to define to be s minus i plus 1. We define it as s minus i plus 1 because the range of values for s, they are in i to j. So the lowest value k takes is if I plug in i for s, k goes from, if I plug in i there, I get i minus i plus 1, that's 1. And if I plug in j, I get j minus i plus 1, and that's n. K is much more like what we are familiar with. In many of our examples from the past, we have dealt with having a random value selection between 1 and n. So this is very much in our wheelhouse in terms of what we're more accustomed to. So what are the sizes down here? I have an s minus i here. If I look at my expression that I used to define k, that looks a lot similar. So I can rearrange this to write it as k minus 1 is equal to s minus i. So this first recursive call is of size k minus 1. And the bottom one, if I was to solve for s over here in our expression for k, if I solve that for s, I get s is equal to k plus i minus 1. Let's plug that in. And we get this is equal to j minus k plus i minus 1, which is equal to j, I'm going to write this in a funny order, minus i plus 1 minus k. So that's actually very convenient because j minus i plus 1 is just n minus k. So the size of my recursive calls depend on k in a very natural way. So this is nice. The things we need to contend with now are what are the run times of median and run times of partition? So the run time of median, there are several ways you could try to do this, but it can be a bit difficult. Let's pretend for now that it costs CN time. We're just pretending that. We'll talk about that very briefly. I'll post some code for you that can do that, but it turns out to be very hard to get that to work. And partition, we already talked about in our partition video that that takes cn time. So we have cn here. So the runtime for all of the non-recursive work would be cn. So my algorithm here looks like 
t of n is equal to cn plus a recursive call of size k minus 1 and a recursive call of size n minus k. With that in mind, we actually know more about this because we are finding the median and the median has nice properties. The median of this array should be n over 2, which is what that k value represents. So if we plug that in, we get t of n equals cn plus t of n over 2 minus 1 plus t of n minus n over 2, which I'm going to do some approximating here to make our lives easier. This is approximately cn plus t of n over 2 plus t of n over 2. That's t of n. And that's assuming that that median method always finds the median correctly and that we can do it in linear time, which may or may not be the case for various problems. So this recurrence relation is cn plus 2 t of n over 2. And this is all well and good, and we can analyze this. We did this exact recurrence relation when we studied merge sort, so I'm going to leave it to you to practice that. This is in theta of n log n. Which is fine, but it turns out finding the median efficiently can be very difficult there, and we haven't even talked about how you would do that. So we're going to use an alternative implementation, which will be quicksort2, which will be referenced in a different video.